Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, we're going to get into a little bit of Mormon Kabbalah. Uh, we have a meeting every Thursday evening. It's 9 o'clock Eastern. It's on the calendar. I'll put a link down in the description below. And I, I want to invite you to come. Please come. For a long time, we originally um, we were doing a Thursday meeting. And I, I don't want to get into the whole deal. But basically, we had some topics. And it was kind of a hit or a miss. And finally, got to the point to where... Okay, well, we're just going to talk about whatever anybody wants to talk about if anybody shows up. And I just, I was just there on Thursdays. I just hung out. If somebody came, we chatted. If multiple came, we had a great conversation. We had a great conversation with just me and one other person too. Don't get me wrong. But eventually it started to grow. And so we're like, okay, so what do we do with this? And we have decided that we're going to use this as the Mormon Kabbalah class of the School of the Prophets. Now, I don't want you to think that this is something where if you miss one, you can never come. We're going to be talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book and we're going through it, but I want it to be the type of discussion where, number one, I'm not lecturing people. So because of that, if you're new, you can come and ask questions. Anything you don't understand, we will happily go over again. That's definitely not a problem. So please don't think that you can't come. And at the same time, we're going to keep growing in what we're learning and, and trying to make it relevant to the group. If I lecture, it won't be relevant to a group. I, I lecture here, right? I mean, I'm doing a lecture right now because no one can interrupt me and no one can answer. No one can ask, I should say, any questions while I'm talking. So we, we don't need people to come and watch a live YouTube video, right? We want to have a discussion. So I kind of want to do this video as an introduction to the discussion I don't want to get into really deep into what Mormon Cabal is. I've already made several videos about that. And there's there's a, there's plenty of videos. I've got a whole podcast if you want to go and listen to it. But you don't need to to join these groups. I want to, to join the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Thursday night group. I'll make sure you know that. But what we talked about last week, I felt was so fundamentally important that I, I want to make this video. And if it comes up again in conversation in the Thursday group, that's absolutely perfectly fine. But I just want to kind of share with you the discussion that we had. So to get into this, I want to start off by reading a scripture. And this is Doctrines of the Saints, section 125. And it says, Kabbalah is a mysticism, a theology, and a thermaturgy. Kabbalah is the tradition of Israel. It is my doctrine, and thus it is a mysterious art. For my doctrine is too simple for mankind to comprehend. The first thing we talked about is the reality that if we're looking at Kabbalah, because a lot of people will start, oh, what's Kabbalah? Let's Google it. Let's find out. And they're like, this is a mess. This is confusing. What is this? Well, if it's a mess and it's confusing, then don't worry about it. That's not Kabbalah. It, at least it's not the Kabbalah you need to know about right now. Because it says very clearly here in verse 8, Kabbalah is the tradition of Israel. It is God's doctrine. And thus it is a mysterious art. Why? Because the doctrine of Jesus is too simple for mankind to comprehend. So if you're looking at this massive tree of life with all these Hebrew words, and you're like, this isn't too simple to comprehend. If you don't understand it yet, then you don't need to worry about it. We'll, we will get there together. Okay. I do want to discuss today, though, Verse 7, where it says that Kabbalah is a mysticism, a theology, and a thaumaturgy. What, what are these things? What do they have to do with Mormonism? And, and how are we going to talk about them? Well, we went around the group and had everyone say, okay, what is mysticism to you? What does it mean to you? What, what is theology? What does theology mean to you? What does thaumaturgy mean to you? And we came to this idea that the mysticism is that that connection that we make with God, that personal connection, right? Because if you don't have that, then the theology isn't theology. It's just philosophy. So it's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. You can have philosophy and you can have mysticism, but when you turn philosophy into theology through mysticism, now suddenly they complement each other. You get the peanut butter, you get the jelly, so you can make a sandwich. It's going to be delicious. Now, thermaturgy is really miracle-working. That, that's that's the strict definition of it. But I've talked in other videos about how, you know, one time a woman just came and brought me food when I needed food. There's been there's been times when I saw someone that I wouldn't have noticed otherwise that needed help and I was able to help them, you know, so it's gone both ways. 
a miracle doesn't have to be mountain move from here to here you know a mountain can be a simple act of charity and so therefore this miracle working to me is the bread you have this connection to god and you have this theology and 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 you have you have these because they feed off of each other that relationship with god helps you understand and study be a disciple of christ study the ideas of god and vice versa, because you are studying, it helps build that connection, deepen that personal relationship between you and the Lord. But what good is it if you're just doing that internally? If none of that leaves you and affects the world in your actions, then it's kind of irrelevant. So to me, the thermaturgy is really the bread. You've got your jelly and you've got your peanut butter. You're not going to like have two spoons and kind of stir them together. No, you're going to put them on the bread and you're going to eat the sandwich, right? It's it's what the thermosurgy is what brings the gospel of Jesus Christ to life. It, it's the practical application of the gospel. And so I think this is a really good example of this idea that the doctrine of Christ is a mysterious art because it's too simple for people to comprehend. We see this word mysticism there, and we're like, oh, so we have to go to a cave and meditate, and what, what does that mean? Theology, I've got to go to college and you know get a seminary degree, and thermaturgy, I've got to, I don't know, am I healing the sick maybe? What is this? We're thinking about it too hard. We need to step back and realize, no, mysticism is just praying and listening to the Lord. It's that simple. We do that every day, right? Theology is a general understanding, thinking about reading the scriptures. What do they mean through the Holy Spirit? Putting that, that mysticism, your prayer, and the scripture study to, to get together, to good use, right? You can have uh, an atheist read the Bible and he's going to come up with this crazy stuff. So you don't eat shellfish. Like That's not really the point of this book. Um, and then the thermaturgy, that's just the practical application. These are words that we take and we, we try to make them into something crazy complicated. But it's the simplicity that we should be striving for. And so if you're coming to this class... I don't want you to think this is going to be boring because we're just talking about simple things. But at the same time, I don't want you to think that we have to make it confusing or complex in order for it to work. We all exist on different levels. Think about math. If you think about math right now, 2 times 2 is 4, and it's just kind of common knowledge. But when I was a kid, I first learned addition. And I learned that 2 plus 2 was 4. And that 3 plus 3 was 6. And I felt very smart. I'm like, okay, I've got 2 here. I've got 2 here. Boom, now i got 4. I have 3 here. I have 3 here. Boom, now I have 6. This is great. Well, now suddenly, we're going to take it a different way. If you have 2 and 3 and subtract, mm, you got 1. And... That's a different concept. But it wasn't really that hard because I'd already learned the addition and so I fed off of that, right? Then it came time for multiplication. Ooh, that's easy. Zero plus anything is zero. Mm, got it. One, uh, one times anything is that number. Got it. Two times two. Okay, now wait a minute. Why is two times two four just like two plus two, but then two times... 3 is 6, and 3 times 3 is 9. And suddenly you realize, okay, well, no, you've got two sets of 2s, which makes 4, or you have two sets of 3s, which makes 6. Um, I don't have six fingers, so I can't really do that one very well. But the concept is easier to understand because you've already had the the addition and subtraction. And then when it comes to the division, you know, I, I still remember my teacher saying, this is the hardest one at all. I was like, oh no, the hardest one of all. But then I was like, no, this is like subtraction. This is just backwards multiplication, right? And she's like, yes, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. It's the same thing here. 
you can take this idea of mysticism and say, you know, you got to go to a cave and meditate. And some people do, but it doesn't mean that's what you have to do. We're looking for the simplicity of the message. What is the Lord looking for in you? Theology. You can go and you can get a doctorate. And, and for some people, that's, that's exactly what is needed. That's awesome. But it's not mandatory for you to really understand the nature of God. Joseph Smith started this whole movement and he had a third grade education. Now, I'm not saying he was uneducated. He was very, very intelligent. Uh, but he was not a doctor. He did not have a doctorate. You, you don't have to do that or have one of those in order to, to really study theology. And as for thermaturgy, listen to the Lord. What is the Lord asking you to do? What miracles can you bring into the world through your actions? How do you bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to life in your reality, in your world, in your life? I think that when we try to make things more complex than they actually are, we move away from the Lord and towards our own imaginations. And I think that's important to understand because if Kabbalah is a tradition, because it says Kabbalah is the tradition of Israel, then that means it's something that's passed down. We teach our children the gospel of Jesus Christ. We teach them how to be kind. We teach them how to love, how to be good people. That is the core message of Kabbalah, right? I've talked about that before. Love God, love your neighbor. So my Thursday thought for you is, number one, an invitation. We'd love to see you there. The link that's going to be in this video, even though it's not the correct date, the uh, the link to the actual place we'll be meeting will always be the same and we'll, it will always be there on the calendar for you to find. The other thought I have for you is how can we deepen our relationship with the Lord without overly complicating things? I want to hear your thoughts on that question. So I hope that you will come to one of these meetings whenever it is, five years from now, tonight, next week, doesn't matter. But I want you to think about it. How can we live the gospel of Jesus Christ in its simplicity, in the love, the love that we have for the Lord and the love that we have for, the, for our neighbors and the love that the Lord has for us? So that's my Thursday thought for you this week. And I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.